One week after a triple overtime win put them in the national spotlight, Georgia Southern is back in Statesboro for homecoming. They're trying to get back over 500 today, and they're big favorites against New Mexico State, who's still looking for their first win of the year. You're watching the Sun Belt Conference on ESPN. Great to have you with us again today. Alongside Danny Waugh, I'm Greg Talbot, and Amy Zimmer joins us on the sidelines in just a minute. Well, the Eagles and Aggies aren't in the same conference anymore, but Danny, they used to be, so they still know each other pretty well. That's right, Greg. And last season, they faced each other in New Mexico, where Georgia Southern got the win 48-31. to The Aggies didn't make it easy for the Eagles in the first half, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here today. All right, so today is all about rushing game versus passing game, and if you know New Mexico State, you know how much they throw the ball, so their whole offense goes through their quarterback Josh Atkins. That's right, a red shirt sophomore and getting better every year. Three for three touchdowns against Central Michigan a few weeks ago. He's had an off week to rest and prepare for this game. He should be ready to go here this afternoon. All right, as for Georgia Southern, Logan Wright, their number one running back, is still out another five or six weeks. Good news for them is that Wes Kennedy got back two weeks ago and he has been a star. That's right, and you put him in space, he's going to make a play for Georgia Southern. Scored two touchdowns, had over 100 yards rushing, including having the game-winning touchdown against Coastal Carolina in triple overtime. Well, we had three overtimes and a dance-off on this field last week. Let's see what we have in store today. It's the Aggies and Eagles next on ESPN. Georgia Southern has won the coin toss as elected to receive. Guys, shake hands. Lost freshman offensive lineman Jordan Wiggins to suicide by overdose on Monday night. The team is using today's game to remember Wiggins and raise awareness for suicide prevention. For more, we go down to Amy Zimmer on the sideline. In honor of Jordan, the coaching staff is wearing purple and turquoise ribbons, the colors of suicide prevention awareness. The team is using purple mouth guards and wearing a suicide prevention sticker on the back of the helmets. Today, the team is playing for Jordan and using today's game as a way to bring the community together during this difficult time. Greg, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Amy. So there you see Chad Lunsford. He was talking to his players this week, and he posed the question to his guys, Danny, do you guys want to play this game? They all said, yes, we want to honor Jordan, but we also want to get back to some kind of routine. Yeah, and when we talked to Chad Lunsford on Thursday. You could definitely tell a lot was on his mind. Killer mic, please. And he would have been surprised if the team chose not to play, but they chose to play this game today, playing for Jordan. And we're about to be on the way here in a matter of moments. All right, so New Mexico State entering this game 0-7 on the year, still looking for their first win, coming off a bye week and also headed into a bye week. Georgia Southern back to even 500 after a triple overtime win against Coastal Carolina last weekend. Wes Kennedy back to receive. And he signals for a fair catch. And what a great game he had last week, scoring the winning touchdown against the Chanticleers in triple overtime. All right, so here comes this Georgia Southern offense. Danny once again led out there by their quarterback, Shy Wirtz. It's his fourth game back from injury. Played pretty cautiously the first couple of games, but he made a couple really gutsy throws in over the time to put them over the top to beat the shots. Yeah, and those two touchdowns that he threw to Mark Rashad in, the, in both first and second overtime were his first touchdowns officially on the season. So it'll be interesting to see how he continues from that win last Saturday. J.D. King and Wes Kennedy, the two running backs for Georgia Southern. They dive forward for a gain of three or four yards on the play on their first of the game. And that is J.D. King, the Oklahoma State transfer. He is their main running back now that Logan Wright, their previous number one guy, is out for a couple of weeks. Yeah, and in his first official start as the number one running back for the Eagles last week, he had 22 carries, 84 yards. He's a solid running back, able to get you three or four yards a carry and the move the offense down the field. How did he look to you last week just in terms of his performance? I think this was the best that he's looked all season. I mean, when we, we talked about it last week and the situation that was going on with J.D. King, how 
He officially was eligible on August 19th, and at that time during training camp, he was getting reps with the third string and fourth string offense. But then once the season started and he was officially eligible, worked his way through the rotation, and now he feels comfortable out there for Georgia Southern. And he picks up the first down on back-to-back -back carries, looking pretty good so far. Other running backs in the Southern rotation today, Wes Kennedy, of course, from Savannah, and then Matt LaRoche, Speedy LaRoche. This yep. redshirt sophomore out of Venice, Florida. You know, I'm interested to see how much we'll see of LaRoche. He only had three carries against Coastal last week. They'll run the option. They'll get it to Kennedy. Up to the 37 or 38-yard line. Stopped for a gain of about four on the play. That ball's on the ground, and New Mexico State says they have it, and they do. It's Rashi Hodge. Well, for New Mexico State, their linebackers lead this defense, and Hodge with his first fumble yeah, recovery of the season, fumble, just like that. Defense. First down, New Mexico State. So the officials say it's officially New Mexico State ball. Take another look here. Almost like the ball was stripped out of the hands. A good strip by Hodge. And all of a sudden now, really great field position for the Aggies on offense. And as we get ready to talk about them, their quarterback, the redshirt sophomore Josh Atkins, is one of the leaders in the country in passes and completions per game. He swings it out to their leading receiver on the year, Tony Nicholson. Gets down to around the 30, bringing up second down and short. And Josh Atkins has been awfully efficient this year. 63% through the air, 1,700 yards. But Danny, he can be careless with the ball. Nine touchdowns in 12 picks. Yeah, and in the previous game, two weeks ago against Central Michigan, he did have a solid game, three touchdowns. Did throw one interception. They'll go on the ground here back to Jason Huntley. His first carry of the game comes to be yard short. But what's going to be interesting now is, you know, prior to this game, it wasn't raining. You know, it was cloudy around here in Statesboro, and now the rain started to pour. It'll be interesting to see you know, how that affects Atkins' passing game with New Mexico State being a pass-first offense. Third down and two. They'll go back to the ground. This is Christian Gibson, their number two running back. He's up to the 26, and he got awfully close to the first down. Gibson was a big guy for them last year. Six touchdowns, but he's had a slower start this year. He's still not 100% of the way back from a hamstring injury. Yeah, 42 carries, 160 yards entering this game, and it'll be interesting to see how much we see of Gibson and Huntley here throughout this afternoon. New first down here for Atkins. And they pitch it on the outside to Gibson for the second straight play, but the defense there to gobble him up around the 25. Really good stop. And the linebackers for Georgia Southern do a really good job that time. Great tackle by defensive end Dylan Springer. Springer came up late in the clutch against Coastal Carolina last week. So like we said, Josh Atkins is a high percentage passer who can sometimes be careless with the ball, but I'll tell you, his coach is really high on him. Head coach Doug Martin says that he is the best leader he has coached in college football since he coached Julian Edelman back at Kent State. And what's interesting for Atkins as he bounces outside. Comes to the near side, easy high percentage pass down there to Robert Downs around the 15. And if he didn't get it, he came awfully close. So it's interesting about Atkins, the redshirt sophomore, so he's going to get better every year as he progresses. So that's a lot of high praise coming from the head coach, Doug Martin. No kidding. I was blown away to hear that. I was actually about a redshirt sophomore, a guy who's so young, but comes with a pedigree. Josh Atkins, the QB, he was a Texas high school quarterback, and you know what they say about that. Third down at a short four. Goes far side. That's the first pass of the day to Navion Mitchell. He dove forward toward the 15. That's going to be a close marking, and this might be four down territory. I think he came up just a couple of inches short, and he did. And the Aggies look like they're going to keep the offense on the field. They go for it plenty. They're 7 for 10 this year on fourth down. Wide open formation here for Atkins. Feed the ground game, falling forward. And it looks like they'll convert by about a yard as they went back to Jason Huntley for his second carry. The Aggies are also solid in the red zone. 17 for 23 at 74% and 14 of those 17 touchdown or the scores were touchdowns. Huntley a big time player for the Aggies leading the team in rushing this year. 450 yards, four touchdowns. Also catches a ton of passes out of the backfield too. So you always have to be wary of where he is. 
New first down into the red zone this time. Atkins swings out one of those passes, and this time he's got Christian Gibson and taken down pretty fast by Montuavian Brinson. You talk about the dual threat of Huntley. Also, you can't forget about Atkins because he has run a couple of times. He has four rushing yep. touchdowns on the year. And that rain continuing to pour down. This is similar to what we saw last week against Coastal. Where, where we had a tropical storm make its way through the area, and it was just very consistent rain that, that took place all day. This is a little bit different. It's been pouring on for the last 30, 45 minutes, and it's not letting up anytime soon. All right, no huddle here for the Aggies. They're going fast on third down and four. Gibson in the backfield. They'll feed him behind his blockers. Spins down to the one or the two-yard line for a first down. And after Georgia Southern got the ball to begin the game on the first drive and fumbled it away, this would be worst-case scenario. Yeah, we'll see what and how Georgia Southern is going to be able to stop the Aggies here at the goal line. And you saw the, the no-huddle offense from Mexico State trying to take the Eagles off their guard. First and goal from inside the two. Back to Gibson in the defensive line with a great stop for Georgia Southern pushing him back. Just a pile of bodies. Looks like Elijah Campbell got to him first. Able to take down Gibson. That was a good play made by the Eagles. Campbell one of the DNs, but as good as the defensive line was last week in that triple OT win, it was really the linebackers last week, Danny, that won the game for the defense. Well, the linebackers that controlled the defense throughout the majority of the game, but late in that fourth quarter before the overtime started, the D-line made some key sacks. Back to Gibson, he's got a blocker. Rather, that's Huntley, and he's into the end zone. New Mexico State strikes on their first drive. Uh, that did not take long, and that fumble really hurt Georgia Southern. And that's the fifth touchdown of the season for Jason Huntley, the senior running back leading the team in rushing, like we said. And Good push up front, that entire short field drive by the offensive line. The question is going to be how Georgia Southern answers back after that strip. From Dylan Brown. That one is good, and New Mexico State takes advantage really fast and takes a 7-0 lead on Georgia Southern early on in the first quarter. Well, in case you're just joining us, no, you are not watching a replay of last week's storm-induced triple overtime game against Coastal Carolina for Georgia Southern. But Chad Lunsford loves these kind of elements that, Danny, that said, uh, not sure you can say the same about the team after falling behind 7-0 early on. Yeah, that, you know, the Eagles are trying to get settled in, but that fumble really did hurt them on the first drive. So we'll see how the Eagles can, can bounce back. Low line drive kick. Kennedy's going to let that one roll out of the end zone and take it to the 25. And you talk about the rain, and last week the athletic department dubbed the, the, the game against Coastal Carolina a Paulson Poncho party. So it looks like we're getting part two here this afternoon as the rain just unexpectedly made its way through, and it is it is continuing to pour down. So how that affected the game last week, it really took away most of the passing game until we got to OT. It was 10 to 10 at the end of regulation. Oh, look at that. And you can see just how much it's affecting it. We're calling it Lake Paulson today. And bless the students that showed up and the folks around the Savannah area as well. So Georgia Southern actually got the ball on a kick return to begin this game, but fumbled it away on their first series. Start the second series by feeding J.D. King and the defense there to stop him pretty fast. Cedric Wilcox, the D-lineman, there to slow him down for the rest of the team. Yeah, the red shirt senior just got all up on J.D. King, giving him any opportunity to move forward. All right, Danny, so you and I watched a Georgia Southern game in the rain last week. The question is, are we going to see the same effect? Are we going to see very little passing until passing is necessary? For New Mexico State, yes, but for Georgia Southern, they're a run first team, so their offense isn't going to change. They're going to continue to move the ball downfield, giving it to their top two running backs in Wesley Kennedy and J.D. King. They're going to call that one a loss of two on the play. Wurtz goes to Kennedy and the defense there to meet him, but he turns the corner past the 40-yard line and down the sideline he goes. Two more as he cuts back to midfield, and there goes Wes Kennedy! 
70 yards! Touchdown, Southern! That's his third touchdown of the year, and it's back to a one-point game. Rather his fourth. Well, we've talked about the ability for Kennedy to make people miss if you give him room on the outside. Beautiful toss to Kennedy on the outside, and he did the rest. Able to break pass, one defender. Good blocking by the offensive lineman. And then cuts his way back in. And was able to get the touchdown. So a great way for Georgia Southern to answer back after on the first drive of the series, first series they had, they fumbled the ball. And it might be hard to see on your individual TV screens at home, but look at the water on the field. The fact that he ran it back, amazing. We're all square in state. Well, we jokingly called it Lake Paulson a second ago, but if you look at the feet of the cheerleaders, Danny, they're standing in standing water. Yeah. I mean, I've said it multiple times already here in the, in the first quarter. It's just, The rain is just continuously pouring its way throughout here in Statesboro. And I don't know if it's going to get any – I don't know if it's going to let up at all as this game moves on. But we got ourselves another battle on our hands here in Statesboro. Fast to kick it away. Over the head of Huntley, and that one goes out of the back of the end zone. Okay, so once again, if you look at the field, you can see that even though there is drainage infrastructure underneath the field here at Paulson Stadium, we are still seeing a bunch of water that is standing on the field that hasn't quite seeped through yet. Uh, for a Georgia Southern team that we thought that might make it difficult on because it's harder to run in that, certainly didn't look too difficult on that last play for West Kennedy. No, Kennedy was able to take it down to the house. Uh, I... A big-time run to, to bounce the Eagles' offense back. Now the question is, what's going to happen with New Mexico State? Because the average, only 105 yards rushing, but a majority of their offense comes through the air. First play of that next drive, they feed Huntley. Spun down by the defensive line, Rashad Bird first among equals there. And speaking of the weather, more down, down to uh, Amy Zimmer on the sidelines, who is wet. technical difficulties there for a moment. Yeah, sorry about that. As you might expect, the rain is messing with some of this broadcast technology, but down goes Atkins. And it's Vleem who got to him first. Big, long third down coming up next. All right, third down and 17. They'll keep it on the ground and just go to Huntley. Comes to the near side. Can't even get to the 20-yard line of the defense. Is there to stop him. Kendrick Duncan Jr. in the backfield. And you know the Eagles got to be happy to have Duncan back on the field because last week against Coastal Carolina, a targeting foul violation on Duncan that had him miss the majority of the game. What a big sack by Bleem, though. First full sack of the season. And a three now for New Mexico State. What a couple of amazing plays by the Georgia Southern defense on the back end. So, is there a chance that some of that was just impacted by the fact that you can't really get a good foot in the ground if you're New Mexico State? Well, that and Williams did a good job getting to the quarterback. That punches away from Peyton Fiesler. Down inside the 40, and Kennedy will take the fair catch, and Georgia Southern's going to have decent field position here. And now that it sounds like we have our technical difficulties figured out, down to Amy we go. Greg, the rain this week compared to last week is much different. The field is already flooded on the sidelines completely. And the team was using light blue towels earlier, and those were being passed around. Now you see those just sitting on the chairs. There is no helping any of these players when it comes to trying to get dry, and they're just playing through it the best they can. Greg. All right, thank you so much, Amy. Shy Wurtz on the keeper there, and it looks like he nearly let that one go for what would have been the second time. Good news is he's able to hold on, and they do maintain possession, but he was taken down for a loss of maybe two yards. 
Yeah, Wirtz there on the on the option run. Got surrounded by two defenders. Didn't really have anywhere to go. All right, so after that big breakaway run from West Kennedy, we have seen, uh, I believe, three consecutive backwards plays when you combine both teams. Yeah, this shows how much the rain is a factor here early on. King and LaRoche in the backfield for Georgia Southern. Wirtz runs the option. LaRoche behind him. He's going to keep. Takes a couple of defenders with him. Gets two yards shy of the sticks, and that'll turn it into third down and short. Really great run from Shy Wirtz. Yeah, it's interesting how Wirtz will do against his New Mexico State defense. On paper, it says they're on a 4-3, but they have a linebacker acting like a defensive end on the outside, so it's kind of like a multiple 3-4. But going up against a run first team, expect that end to be rushing against the offensive line rather than being a linebacker dropping back to stop passes. And New Mexico State's defense this year certainly not accomplished at stopping the run. Third down and two, King in the backfield. They're going to give it to him. He's got a head of steam and some space. J.D. King inside the 30 and down to the 22. Great run up the middle by King. They're able to get past a couple of defenders. Only needed two yards, but that burst of speed right there. Turns it up a notch. Got a couple of extra yardage. Good block up front by Malik Murray as well. I don't know whether or not that's intentional, but you can see the running back starting to engage in some high stepping. Don't want to get dragged down in the water. Don't want to slip either. So Eagles just outside of the red zone. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. The Roche and King in the backfield. Wirtz runs the option and is taken down for a big loss. And once again, it's Hodge, his second tackle in the backfield today. And for New Mexico State, I mean, they're three linebackers kind of lead this defense with, with Hodge just made a tackle and had the fumble and fumble recovery earlier along with Devin Richardson and Javon Ferguson. So when you get to that second level expect those three guys to make a play and try to stop this running game. Call that a loss of four on the play taken down back between the 27 and 28 yard lines as Southern splits out Mark Mashad to the top of your screen as the wide receiver. Only one safety back but it's to the near side of the field. Second and 14, they'll stay on the ground and give it to King, but can't turn that into a 30-yard run this time, and he's only back to the 25 for maybe a gain of two. King ran right into the wall. The offensive line didn't have the best trying to push forward. and Kind of got stuck nowhere, so it'll be third and 13. It'll be interesting to see what the Eagles do. Haven't passed yet here in the quarter, and... If they give it to Kennedy, they got to toss it to him on the outside to get some space and, and move downfield. Like you said, notable that Wurtz has not gone to the air yet today. Third down and 13. Wurtz will look to throw, dumps it off to Kennedy. Can he get some space? Down to around the 20, rather inside the 16 before he's pushed out. Maybe a yard or two short, so this might be Tyler Bass time on fourth down. More than likely, and Bass is making his way out on the field. So Wards blew his first throw, found Kennedy on the flat route, and was able to get a couple of yards. Was close, but not enough for a first down. All right, here's Tyler Bass, 13 for 18 on the season. Had a little bit of trouble last week against Coastal Carolina in the rain and the wind. Man off the edge, kick has the distance. And that one hooked. It's no good. We're going to stay tied 7-7 seven to seven with two minutes to go in the first quarter here on ESPN3. Head coach of the Aggies, Doug Martin, in his seventh season at the helm in Las Cruces. Uh, interesting, Danny. He's also the offensive coordinator and calls the plays. Uh, you see that now more and more in the NFL, but not necessarily college football. Yeah, you don't really see that much in college football for sure. I mean, it's interesting to see what he's going to decide to do here. And first play of the new drive, they go to Huntley as he tries to catch the edge. Taken down for a loss around the 19-yard line, pushed out by Jay Boudry. Of course, New Mexico State is trying to get their first win today. They enter today 0-7. They had a rough start to the season, especially when your first two games are against two teams that are nationally ranked, Washington State, and then going to Tuscaloosa to face Alabama. 
and then the last couple of games, a loss to San Diego State, New Mexico, Fresno State, Liberty, and Central Michigan. Atkins keeps it on play action, and he's taken down for a loss again. The Southern defense is swarming Rashad Bird with his second tackle. And you know, before we get off topic with it, Danny, it is one thing to know that you're playing Alabama and they're going to tire you out physically. Being the defense against a Washington State offense, they'll tire you out just as much in a different way. Yeah, that's definitely for sure. I mean, like I said, the, the first couple of games were rough for them. They've had a couple of close contests. A three-point loss to New Mexico, a seven-point loss to Liberty at, at their homecoming. Good job by Rashad Bird to make that tackle on second down. Bad throw from Huntley off the hands of Robert Downs, and that one could have, could have been picked off. Yeah, we're already seeing the effects of the rain and how that's affecting Atkins. Jesse Limtrot not happy that he had a chance at that one. Montwavian Brinson tells him he'll get it next time. Yeah, first incompletion for Atkins. And the three and out from New Mexico State, unable to capitalize off the missed field goal from Tyler Bass. Yeah, so like we said, Atkins is a high percentage quarterback, 63% completions on the year, but does have a proclivity to uh, make some throws that he probably shouldn't. Peyton puts it in the air. Kennedy's going to let this one bounce to the 41. He's going to pick this up and try to run. Gets three or four yards out of it. A little bit risky, but a couple extra yards never hurt anybody. So here comes the Georgia Southern offense again, Danny. So one huge play outside of that, three or four yard chunks. Yeah, and I think for Georgia Southern here, they make their way back onto the field, is to get Kennedy more involved. I mean, you see them going up the middle between the linemen with J.D. King, and then they work on the outside with Kennedy. They should work on the outside more. They only use them for a couple of key plays, of course, being the, the touchdown run, the big touchdown run to put the Eagles on the board. All right, and here comes the Southern offense again. The defensive ends and linebackers have looked awfully good for this Aggies defense. New series from the 45, and Wurtz looks to throw downfield. He's uncorking one for Ransom over his head in coverage. No flags at the 15. That's a clean play. Yeah, and usually when you see Shyward drop back eight times out of ten, he's looking for the deep ball downfield. The shot. I'm sorry, with Ransom, I'm sorry, with two catches and only on the season trying to get his third. Like you said, no pass interference on the play. Well, you know what's funny? Colby Ransom had a slower start to the season, but even these last couple games, you're seeing him get some targets. Yeah, you're seeing the wide receivers get more involved. I mean, before Coastal Carolina, Mark Machado only had three catches, and he made two big catches in the end zone for touchdowns in overtime. Aggies bring four. Eagles on the option. Wurtz goes down around the 42-yard line. And once again, it's Hodge. Big third tackle, his second for loss. I mean, they're the top three tacklers on the team, the linebackers for New Mexico State. Hodge had 55 tackles, 28 solo tackles, leading the team in that category entering this game. Yeah, he's been an absolute monster today, breaking into the backfield for the Aggies. Big third down and 13. Eagles on third down this year. The worst mark in the conference, 26%. Shy looks to throw. One for one on the day. Instead, he'll tuck and run. Pass midfield inside the 40. And here he goes to the near sideline. Wurtz inside the 20 to the 10. And down he goes into the red zone. And what a great way to end the quarter for Georgia Southern. Well, the Eagles football team lost a member of its family on Monday night when freshman Jordan Wiggins passed away. Jordan, 18 years old, was an offensive lineman from Tallahassee, Florida, who was scheduled the red shirt. Our thoughts are with Jordan's family and friends during this difficult time. Time out. Monsoons in back-to-back -back weeks here in Paulson Stadium, but the Eagles student section has something to be happy about. After a big breakaway run from Shy Wurtz, their quarterback, Eagles down to the Aggie 11 and trying to take the lead early in the second quarter. On the ground, first carry of the game out of the backfield for Gerald Green. 
and Gerald Green was someone that offensive coordinator Bob the Best talked about last week and how they were trying to utilize him against Coastal Carolina, but they weren't able to get to him at the time. So now giving Green an opportunity here and was close to scoring for Georgia Southern. He's back there in the backfield again. Let's see if they hand off to him again. Mashaw to the near side is the wide receiver. And they'll feed him. Green behind a couple of blockers. Down to the one or two, and he stopped just shy of the end zone, bringing up third down. Well, actually, it depends. That one might have fought forward. We have the sticks between the one and the two-yard line right now. And Green, a true freshman for this Eagles team. Freshman from Columbus, Georgia. One of the young guys that Chad Lunsford really believes in. Alongside the true freshman Caleb Hood, who's one of the team's leading wide receivers on the year. And then you look at Logan Wright, Matt LaRoche, a lot of freshmen and sophomores making big impacts on this team. And it looks like the refs are going to take a look at the spot of this one, probably. Yeah, it looks close. Taking out a look here. Green off a good block. All right, he got it. So first down and goal from around the two-yard line here for Georgia Southern. And that's J.D. King in the backfield. Shy Wurtz, by the way, has not rushed for a touchdown yet this year. And on first down, they'll feed King. He shakes off a blocker and scores. Fire that cannon for the Oklahoma State transfer. And King with his third rushing touchdown on the year was able to break off of that tackle by Javon Ferguson. Ferguson had him in the back, wasn't able to hold on to King. Big time run, and now the Eagles are ahead. All right, here's Tyler Bass. He did just miss a field goal attempt a couple of minutes ago. Hits that one there, but that was pretty close to the right half. So kicking Danny, obviously going to be kind of an iffy proposition today. Yeah, and here you see again, Ferguson had King, but wasn't able to fully wrap up. And it's just nice to see how King gets more and more comfortable in this Eagles offense throughout the season. And here's the thing. When you look at him, his frame to the eye might not be too intimidating. He's 5'11", but he's 5'11", 220, and runs like a bowling ball. Yeah, similar to Logan Wright, who's 6'225". A bit of a power back for Georgia Southern. Where you see, so we've seen with the Eagles, you know, they can go either one of two ways. They can go with power with J.D. King, which is a good three to four yard runner per carry. And then Wesley Kennedy, who's also who's full of speed. And also Matt LaRoche been given the opportunities too. You see the one-two punch with Wright and LaRoche, and now you have a one-two punch with King and Kennedy. All right, so Bass to put this one in the air, and that's Jason Huntley back to return their running back, but also... He's only two kick return touchdowns shy of tying the college football career record. He's going to run this one out because he touched it. Can he get out of the end zone? The question is, is it a safety or did he get it out? I think he was just inches out. He spun out. I thought that one touched his hand. I was wondering why it took him a second to look for it. I'm surprised he actually decided to run that ball. That ball went off his hands. And decided to run it. That one was close. Good tackle by Ryan White. All right, so the Georgia Southern defensive line has been a real highlight of the team this year. One of the best rushing defenses in the Sun Belt Conference. Can they get a big push on the Aggies' O-line? They take it from inside the one. On the ground here to Christian Gibson. He's got a head of steam in some space. Up past the 20-yard line toward the 25. That was a big saving run from their offense. Defense, 
And Winslow again, they'll go with a little bit of tempo here. No huddle for New Mexico State's offense. Josh Atkins, the quarterback, has been good so far. Four for five. But short yardage completions, only 17 yards on those four passes. Goes back to Gibson, this time on a swing route. Up past the 30-yard line, gets about four yards out of it. Yeah, we haven't really seen much passing from New Mexico State, especially deep passes here throughout the first portion of this game. We spoke to Scott Sloan, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Southern, and he said he was going to need all the backs that he could get to try and stop this passing game, but Mother Nature also playing a factor as well. Here's Huntley trying to get around the defenders. A couple guys to bring him down. He's got a first down as he spins up toward the 40-yard line. I'll tell you, for a guy who has five career kick return touchdowns, only two shy of tying the college football record, I'm a little bit surprised that he had so much trouble there, but I guess you got to credit the rain and the wind. Yeah, for sure. Right, from the 40, Gibson falls forward to the 45, gets five yards out of it. And really, Jason Huntley has been their number one running back in Las Cruces this year, but they're really going to Christian Gibson quite a bit today. Yeah, I mean... You can tell here the, the game plan has changed up due to the rain. Not as many passing yard, passing plays. And Gibson's 20 yards, uh, 20 pounds heavier than Jason Huntley. He's just a more sturdy guy. So you got a power back and a speed back to mix and match in between with. And here goes the speed back. Huntley down to the southern 40 and a first down and a gain of 15. I mean, seeing the playing conditions on this field, you don't want to tire out Huntley. So you want to have Gibson in the mix as well. They also have some other running backs in O.J. Clark and Terrell Warner, who we have yet to see. There should have been some flags called on that play because there was definitely some motion on both sides of the ball before the snap got off, but I don't think I saw any called. The referee was trying to get out the way. There was definitely a kind of mess there, but they were going to call that a loss of one yard and no flag. It shows how quickly Mexico State's trying to get the ball off. Trying to catch Southern off guard and go up tempo here. Back to the ground. They feed Huntley and down he goes. What a it's Rashad play. Bird and Jay Bowdry. What a beautiful play by Jay Bowdry. Bowdry saw that from the get go. Nobody had him on the outside. You see the left tackle is focusing in on the defensive lineman, but forgot about Bowdry and Bowdry coming in to make the play. You know, ever since Scott Sloan took over as defensive coordinator last year, Southern is known for playing assignment football and not blitzing a lot. When they do, it's been pretty effective. Yeah, this 3-4 defense is something else for Georgia Southern. There's a really great job. You see the Mexico State going five wide. Atkins five for six through the air today. He's got Clark as number two receiver on the air, and he is nowhere close. Chris Harris Jr. on the tackle. That was nowhere near what they needed. Still about 12 yards short of the sticks. And that'll bring up a fourth down, and this should be a punting situation, especially considering the weather, and it is. So it looks like Wes Kennedy is going to get a break for Georgia Southern. They're trotting out Jesse Liptrot to the 10-yard line. Was the main returner of the first couple of games of the year when Kennedy was out. That ball's on the ground. It's not going to get away. It's back around the 50. I think the Aggies. They fell on it, but they certainly recovered. but they didn't get the first down. No. So Georgia Southern is going to end up getting good field position, certainly better than they would have if they had had that ball kicked back to Jesse Liptrot at the 10. So out comes this Georgia Southern offense with a touchdown lead. In case you're just joining us, J.D. King punched it in on their last drive. Couldn't handle the snap. It's the rain, man. The rain and the wind. Back-to-back -back weeks of really just awful football conditions here in Statesboro. Yeah. The thing right there, Kendrick Duncan was trying to go for the scoop and score. Well, they had one earlier this year. Rashad Burke. In a big game, too, against Minnesota that put them in a position to win that game, too. Indeed. All right, so after giving up a really early touchdown, Georgia Southern with back-to-back -back unanswered scores. They take over from the Aggies' side of the 50. Go, 
Flag comes in from the far side, but here's Wes Kennedy. One man to beat. He will score, but will it stand? That flag was thrown midway through the play back when he was around the linebackers and safeties. It was a great run by Kennedy, too. I mean, great job of the offensive line making their key blocks. And then for Kennedy just to slip through before the hole closed on him. All right, here we go. Highlights going to be on the Mexico State. And the touchdown will stand for Georgia Southern. 20 to 7 and three unanswered touchdowns from this Eagles offense now. Kennedy with his third carry already has 125 yards in two touchdowns. We're having some scoreboard issues, which is why they're blowing this play dead. The scoreboard somehow jumped to 38 points, and they were subtracting. The score is actually 20-7, to 7, so they're going to make Tyler Bass kick this one again while they try to get the scoreboard figured out. So this will be to make it 21-7. Bass hit one from this side of the field just a minute ago. And he does so again. So a tough start for Georgia Southern, but then they rattle off three consecutive touchdowns and they'll kick it away after this. Well, here's a look at last year's game when these two got together in Las Cruces. Hope you had the over in this game, Danny. Yeah, last season in Las Cruces, New Mexico. New Mexico State got off to a good start and put the Eagles in trouble. Georgia Southern was able to take the lead before the half ended, capping off a 12-play drive with a three-yard touchdown run by Shy Words. Then in the third quarter, Logan Wright, Monteo Garrett with touchdowns. Logan Wright with two touchdowns in that third quarter, and the Eagles taking it away in the fourth to get that 48-31 win. Really Logan Wright's breakout game last year, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and for New Mexico State, Atkins, Gibson, and Huntley all played in that game. Atkins went for nearly 300 yards, no touchdown, one interception. Huntley, 12 carries, 68 yards, and three touchdowns in that game. All right, so like we said before the break, New Mexico State caught a big time break on their first drive. Southern fumbled it away. They recovered, went down the field pretty quickly, and scored. Since then, three consecutive touchdowns by the Georgia Southern offense, and New Mexico State's had a lot of plays blown up in the backfield. Yeah, I mean, great job by the linebackers. The, the front seven overall just doing a good job. First play of the new drive. Huntley is there. He manages to evade one defender before he's brought down by the seconds. That's Reynard Ellis, and man, what a game he had last week against Coastal. Yeah, nine tackles and really elevated the Eagles' defense in that victory. I mean, with a 3-4, you can just have more guys out in space to stop the passing game here against New Mexico State. So you don't have to blitz just about every play. All right, after a loss of four on the play, second down and 14 as they put Mitchell in motion. Atkins with a little dump off and a bad pass over the head of O.J. Clark behind him and on top of him. Yeah, you can tell Atkins hasn't really been able to to get in rhythm ever since that first series where they ended up scoring. Not only have the defensive linemen did a really good job of closing up holes, but the linebackers have been flying out of the sides as well. There's a couple of big tackles around the edge. We saw a great one by Jay Bowdry on that last drive. Third and 14. Here they come up the middle. Complete pass to about the 30-yard line. That's Isaiah Lottie, his first catch of the game, but he's going to be short, and let's go down to Amy Zimmer. Greg, during New Mexico's, Greg, during New Mexico State's bye week, they worked on fundamentals. 
Head coach Doug Martin said turnovers is what has been hurting the team this season. So they really focused in on ball security drills and they also focused on making their defense tougher with much harder hits during the practice. So although it was a bye week, this team was not taking off. They saw the success on the first drive of the game with the turnover, but now struggling against Georgia State. Georgia Southern, Greg, back to you. Good save there, Amy. High snap. That one down to around the 30-yard line. Takes a good Aggie bounce. Down toward the 22, and that's where Southern takes over as Kennedy lets that one roll out of bounds. We'll take it to break midway through the second quarter here on ESPN3. Well, who needs beautiful Eagle Creek when you have beautiful Eagle Pond? Am I right, Danny? <laughs> yeah, I mean, kids having a fun time here in, in the rain and jumping in the puddles and everything. I mean, it's another <laughs> quality atmosphere here in Statesboro, similar to last week. Yeah, back-to-back -back weeks with really horrible weather, but Eagles managed to escape with a triple overtime win in that game and up a couple of touchdowns here as they feed J.D. King. He scampers ahead for a first down toward the 40-yard line. That's the first time we saw King with a run on the outside. And that's where you've seen the Eagles have the best plays on offense so far in the first half, bouncing it outside. Yeah, really the only huge run up the middle came from J.D. King, and that was a gain of about 30 yards, but everything else has been around the edges. Yeah, I mean, with four down linemen for New Mexico State and also blitzing every now and then, it makes it tough for them to make the stop on the outside. Four down linemen for the Aggies. Inches to go for Southern. And they fall forward and pick it up. That's Speedy LaRoche. And Xander Yarborough, the junior from San Antonio, on the tackle. All right, so the rain has not stopped here in Statesboro, but it has certainly lightened up compared to what it was even 15 or 20 minutes ago. But that's certainly a benefit to Georgia Southern because Shai Wurtz has only had to throw twice today. You could actually say he hasn't technically needed to throw at all, but New Mexico State's offense is so passing-centric that it really hurts them badly. Shy will throw. He's got the dump-off route, and that's over the head of Matt LaRoche, and actually that might have been good because he was going to be taken down for a loss. Yeah, and you saw once again Shy going for the deep ball, looking for a wide receiver downfield. Heavily covered. Instead, went for the safe route, went to LaRoche on the outside. LaRoche unable to make the catch. And I'll tell you, while we have a minute to talk about deep passes downfield, the gutsiness of Bob DeBest to call those back-to-back -to -back touchdown passes in overtime last week, that was something else. Yeah, and the first one is what got me the most because it was fourth down and three as J.D. King unable to go anywhere on that play, on that run. It was fourth down and three, and it was pretty much if you don't get the yardage in the first down, you lose the game. And to go to the end zone on fourth down and three. They had a safe route on that play. Instead, Shad went from Shad. But Shad made a great catch. And then just going to it again to start second overtime period really caught Coastal Carolina off guard. Highlight catches of Mark Mashad's career, that's for sure, in single and double overtime. By the way, there was even more gutsy because Shad had not thrown a touchdown pass yet this year until those. All right, here they come on third and long. Runs to the near side, up to the 42-yard line. He'll come up short, and that'll be fourth down with 6.40 to go. We know that it's a little bit tougher to see the graphics in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, folks. We're working on getting those back up and running for you shortly. Yeah, similar situation to, to last week. I mean, this isn't the first time where we had torrential downpour in Statesboro. There was, a, there was a period of time last year, around this time, close to the early November, where Georgia Southern hosted the Sunbelt Conference Men's Soccer Tournament. And you just see the rain continuing. There we go. Graphics are back. There Good go. news. They so don't call him the worldwide them. leader for nothing. <laughs> really great kick from Anthony Beck down inside the 15. That ball's on the ground. Lane Ekton is pointing that way, and Southern's got it. It's Najee Thompson, the sophomore from Boylan Springs. We've had trouble with kicks and punts, and now punt returns. We saw Huntley have, have trouble trying to get the kickoff return. 
And that time, Clark is unable to, to hold on to it, too. All right, so Georgia Southern one for two in the red zone today. Entering this game, only nine touchdowns and 20 red zone trips. King and Kennedy in the backfield. It's J.D. King cutting up the middle again. Down to the one or the two-yard line and a first down in the process. Well, you see that formation from Georgia Southern where they load up the line of scrimmage. There you see he had seven down linemen up front, and King's able to work his way throughout the mix, almost getting in the end zone. Here come the Eagles from the two. And that's four unanswered touchdowns from Georgia Southern. And it's the second of the day for J.T. King. And this offense is off and rolling, Danny. New Mexico State has not found an answer yet. Ever since that first possession, Georgia Southern's picked up the pieces and has just found different ways to score. Kennedy with two touchdowns. Now J.D. King with two touchdowns today. They're padding their stats here. Tyler Bass has it up and through, and it's 28-7. to And I'll tell you, Danny, everyone here in Statesboro, based on the fact that the last two Eagle games have gone to overtime, after the fumble to start this game on their first drive, and New Mexico State took it down the field and scored, after that first drive, everyone was looking around kind of nervous, saying, oh, man, are we going to have another one of those games here in Statesboro? But what a turnaround effort from this team. And this is pretty much the first game this season where we've seen Georgia Southern have such an outright lead because every game they've had here in the first couple of games, it has been, it has been rocky. I mean, you open the season against LSU, you face Maine, who's one of the top teams in the FCS. Then you have to take on Minnesota at Minnesota, Louisiana. Raging Cajuns in the West Division, the Sun Belt Conference, a heavy favorite to win that division. Every game has just been challenging, and now it seems like the Eagles have been able to break open. And there's Huntley. Last time he received a kickoff, nearly got taken down to the end zone for a safety because it went off his hands. Bass not afraid to give it to him this time, but... That one's way too deep, and it'll fly out of the end zone into the 25-yard line we go. So, like we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, although New Mexico State is no longer in the Sun Belt Conference, uh, they used to be in Danny. These teams have continued to play each other since. Yeah, this is the second game of a second game of a home and home from last season when New Mexico State left the conference. They started this rivalry, this series, when Georgia Southern entered the Sun Belt Conference in 2014. And the only time that New Mexico State has beaten the Eagles was in the 2017 season where Georgia Southern went 2-10. and 10. That loss from the Eagles was 35-27 New Mexico State, and the Eagles dropped to 0-5 at the time. New Mexico State scoring two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to take the win. And this is Christian Gibson. He's been a big-time factor for them today up to the 34-yard line. If he didn't get it, he's awfully close. And... I'll tell you, like we said at the beginning of the broadcast as well, he's been battling his way back from a hamstring injury. He looks pretty close to 100% today. Yeah, and the only way you're going to get better is just by multiple reps, and Gibson being utilized a lot more here today, just showing that he can go a little bit more. Second down and one, they'll go back to him. Mantic has a couple of guys with him, spins forward to the 40 for a new first down and a gain of five. He's able to slide past that first tackle to get the yardage that he needed. And the rain was down for a few minutes, and now it's picked right back up here at Paulson. I don't think it's going to let up at all. No, I think we're, this feels like it's going to go the rest of the way, no? All right, here they come on a new first down. Huntley pushed to the side, and the whole defense there to meet him. First one to get to him, Daryl Baker. Yeah, Daryl Baker on the tackle, just... Nowhere to go for Huntley on that play. Great job by the Eagles defense to blow it up. This is certainly the best game that the Southern defense has had all year in terms of blowing up plays in the backfield. Same for the offense as far as production, too. Certainly will be by the time the game's done, that's for sure. Here's Huntley trying to cut the corner. The 41-yard line, short game, bringing up a long third down. And once again, Baker... 
able to blow up that play. And once again, Huntley nowhere to go. Well, Atkins started the game pretty well. Still 8 for 10 through the air, but only 30 yards passing. He hasn't gone downfield yet here in the first half. We'll see if he does here. Aggies just 2 for 7 on third down tonight. Into coverage. Bad throw. And it's picked off by Kendall Vildor, the first team all-conference corner. And Vildor has to be happy to pick up his first interception of the season. He almost had one against Coastal Carolina, but it got called back due to a holding penalty. And there you see why Atkins hasn't gone downfield. Because the rain and the elements here is a bad throw, overshot his target, and Vildor was there to get the interception. All right, so now it's a clock management exercise and some explosive plays possibly for Southern. Chad Lunsford would love to send this game into halftime up even more. Three touchdown leads, all right. Why not four? Well, I was about to say, with a three touchdown lead, get Gerald Green some more touches there, and he's in the backfield. So the true freshman Gerald Green takes the carry and taken down really great last second tackle that time. That was Hodge again. And Hodge has kind of been the only one that's been able to make plays for New Mexico State's defense. So one or two plays by the ends, but that's really been it, right? Yeah, for the most part, it's been Hodge. I mean, he was able to get the force the fumble, got the fumble recovery as well. We'll see the first Diamondback formation for Georgia Southern here in this half. All right, second down and eight. Here's Kennedy to the 50 with a block. Push out of bounds with 2.43 to go in the half, and Danny, they're going for one more touchdown. Yeah, trying to get one more on the board to make up for that fumble to start the opening drive. So the Mexico State's going to get the ball to start the second half. We know that turnovers have been an issue this year for New Mexico State. Breaking out that diamond backfield. Haven't seen the bobsled one yet tonight. It's J.D. King shaking off more tackles. He's been shedding guys today. He's down to the 38-yard line and close to a first. Got his 10th carry here in the first half. He's doing a great job getting about three or four yards of carry. And I'll tell you, the fact that he's now about 70 yards rushing on the day, Wes Kennedy's up to 130 already. Shy Wirtz is about 50. The fact that they're doing this with some actual puddles on the field is really impressive. Yeah, it definitely is. All right, second down and three. Mashad split to the top of your screen as the wide out. It's Kennedy. Inside the 30 for a first down, and that's going to put him about 140 on the day. I'll be shocked if he doesn't close out today with over 200 at this rate. I, th I think he will for sure. I mean, good job by Kennedy running up the middle, full head of steam. The Eagles quickly getting back for the next play. All right, here's King. Not quite as many running yards today as Kennedy, but he's about 75. Gets back to around the line of scrimmage, and this will take us down to about 1.15 to go in the half. We're going to take a quick break here on ESPN 3 and back in just a second with the end of the first. Well, Shywartz has done a great job leading this team back from the early 7-0 deficit to a 28-7 lead. We're going to hear from him. At halftime, as Amy Zimmer goes under the helmet with Shywerts. So second down and 10. Kennedy split out. That one's over his head. This looks like the main game all over again. Southern can't fall on it. We will see it is New Mexico State that gets to it first. It's Matthew Lung, the linebacker. That's the first bad snap we've seen. And that's in this game. And it was a similar situation like you just brought the main game where they had like five or six bad snaps. That's the first bad snap from Peyton Backer now. Backer not 
usually the starting center. George Southern's had some injuries to their offensive line. Jake Cooper is now out for the season due to a medical medical injury. And now backers here. So the offensive line for Georgia Southern, a unit that was pretty strong when they got rolling last year, has had a lot of injuries that has kept the cast and crew a little bit suspect so far this year as it's taken down for a loss Gleam got there. Well, there's a lot of changes that happen to the O-line because you go from last year to this year, you, leave, you lose two of your starters due to graduation. Brian Miller, is one of the starting offensive linemen for the Eagles, goes down in the preseason. Then you lose Aaron Dowdell, who was a starting left guard, and then also Jake Cooper. Please reset the game clock to one minute. Reset the game clock to one minute. Okay, so as we get ready to head into halftime, New Mexico State might get a couple points on the board here, but assuming it goes 28-7, to if you're Chad Lunsford, you see him getting fired up. Uh, Danny, I think he's got to be happy considering what a strange week this has been for Georgia Southern. Uh, a lot of people around the program were wondering, would they be ready to play this game? The answer has been yes. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been a, a rough time for Georgia Southern this week leading up to the game. And the team wanted to get back out there on the field, and they've had a strong performance in the first half so far. And yeah, this looks like a team that wanted to get out and play. Second down and nine. That one tipped and nearly intercepted, intended for Tony Nicholson, their leading receiver on the season, who's only made one catch today. Danny, they've done a pretty good job locking him down. And Randy Wade Jr. may have gotten a piece of it. The Eagles on that play only sending their three down linemen, having all four of their linebackers drop back in coverage. And look at Kendall Vildor dancing there on the bottom of your screen. Got to love that. They only bring three again. Back to the ground to Gibson. Scampers ahead to the 45. It'll take us down to about 50 seconds. So for now being desperation time for New Mexico State, just trying to move the ball downfield. You're seeing they're trying to pass more. You see those linemen more on the outside of the tackles and focusing on passing pass coverage with those four linebackers New dropping Mexico back. They're second at the half. New Mexico State's going to use a timeout. So fourth down and four. They're going to reset the clock to 51 seconds. And I think at this point, the fact they're drawing up a play on offense, down a couple of touchdowns, going forward on fourth, this almost kind of seems like forget it, whatever territory. Well, they're, tr they're trying to stop the bleeding. If they get a yeah. touchdown here, if they get a touchdown here and they're successful, they get the ball back to start the second half. And then if you're able to have a good first drive out there in the second half, you're right back to one possession game. So I understand why they're trying to go for it on fourth and four. No need to punt that you're across the 50. Four yards for the first down out of timeouts. They're just trying to get it down through as quick as, the, as they can. So the Aggies have already gone for it twice today on fourth down. They're one for two. That makes them eight for 11 on the year. They do like to go for it. Fourth down and four. Couple of safeties way deep back there for Southern. Spread look for Atkins. We're waiting for the play clock to start. Please reset the game clock to 51 seconds. Because they'd accidentally let that clock run down to about 30 before they reset it. So they're looking to get it back to 51, and there it is. And you see five, five wide receivers out. So Atkins and look for a short pass, more than likely. Southern drops back. Atkins has Mitchell, and he's taken down short. That ball incomplete. Maybe it's just hard to catch the ball in this rain. I mean, you can see the frustration there from New Mexico State. Mitchell just bounced right off his hands. Well, the Southern defense has been all over those guys, too. They might have been making catches, but they're not doing it with much space. It's definitely been a frustrating first half for the receiving core from New Mexico State. I mean, if you just look at the stats, the only – player with two catches is Gibson and he's got what eight total yards nobody else has more than one they haven't been able to move the ball downfield it's all been short passes on the outside or short passes over the middle and the Eagles it's going to kneel it go into the locker room and words does take a knee back at the 45 they'll have to do one more but all right Danny your thoughts on the first half heck of a comeback effort after a crazy start 
It was a little shaky at first for, for Georgia Southern with the fumble on the first possession. Then you had the big-time play by Wesley Kennedy. And ever since then, the Eagles' offense has settled in and just big plays made by both Kennedy and J.D. King, both with two touchdowns in the first half. We'll see if they can keep it up. All right, so we'll hear Chad Lunsford on the other end of halftime, but do you think he's happy going into the break? Absolutely. I mean, he has to be incredibly pleased with the way his team's performing. All right, so 28-7, to our halftime score. Amy Zimmer is down on the sideline with New Mexico State. She's got Doug Martin in just a second here. Amy. Coach, being a pass-heavy team, how has the weather affected your play? Well, it's tough. You know, it's hard to catch it. And Josh is having a hard time holding on to it. It's going to dictate that you really got to throw it deeper. You got to throw it really short. The intermediate game's kind of out right now. During your bye week, you said your team focused on turnovers, multiple of those in this game on both sides of the ball. How will you address the team in the locker room? Yeah, it's just the weather conditions. You know, you got to be extra careful now about taking care of it. It's difficult, particularly in the kicking game. That's where we've had two problems so far. Thanks, Coach. All right. Greg. All right, thank you so much, Amy. You're a trooper for being out there the second consecutive week in weather like that. Eagles up 28-7 to at the break, and the halftime show is next. Steve, what does freedom mean to our fans as part of the history of Georgia Southern? What does he mean? Well, it, it, that's a great question. I'll tell you, Art, he has uh, come to be iconic and not surprising. We are Georgia Southern Eagle Nation, but to actually uh, be one of the few institutions around the country that have a live bald eagle that's present at uh, our football games graduation, it, it, it continues to grow, and, and uh, it's really, really a special uh, opportunity to be with Freedom. Tell me the story around Freedom. How did the Wildlife Center in Georgia Southern University acquire a bald eagle? Having an eagle here at the campus of George Southern goes all the way back to football. And the Eric Russell years, we had a, uh, in 1992 or 90, I believe, a bird flew over the state and they called it our mascot, except uh, I don't think it was an avid birder. It turned out to be a turkey vulture that flew over the stadium. And uh, the community, the Statesboro community, wanted to write that travesty and uh, approached me and uh, we were able to put in a request. It took us 13 years to get the right eagle, but uh, that's freedom. Freedom during game day. He's one of the few bald eagles in the country who does a live flight. And so we'll do our practice flights, And but once the flight's done, and that is, is kind of kicking off the game, we don't uh, simply return to the Wildlife Center. We then really do the heavy lifting, which is to go into the crowd and, and share freedom, which actually supports the Wildlife Center. It's what we're all about, man and nature together. So I think that's what really distinguishes him from maybe some of the other eagles, is that we're in the stands, meeting and greeting the fans of Georgia Southern University. Tell us about the impact on the community, the nation. What, what impact do we have with it? Well, you know, that, that, that to me, well, there you go. He's telling you. That, that is, to me, the thing that caught me so flat-footed. I knew it would mean a lot. Uh, what I was not prepared for is that the privilege to travel with the football team all over the nation and wherever we're at, for whatever reason, uh, we're dealing with the national symbol. And it, it's, it's kind of like uh, something so iconic, uh, being a guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The realization that I'm next to something that means so much to so many. And for that, uh, it's just a privilege I, I'm eternally thankful for. Back at Paulson Stadium and ready to start the second half. Let's go down to Amy. She's got Chad.
All right, thank you so much, Amy and Chad. Ready to get things started here in the second half. Georgia Southern technically received, although they fumbled it away on their first drive, and New Mexico State took it down and scored. So uh, the Aggies do get it to begin the second half. Uh, but after that early touchdown for the Aggies there, Danny, four consecutive touchdowns from Georgia Southern. What does New Mexico State need to do to get back in it? Well, now that the rain isn't as bad as it was in the first half, maybe there will be some opportunities for the Aggies to go downfield. So maybe the intermediate passing game might be open for them, but they got to move the ball downfield quick. That went over Huntley's head, and we'll go from the 25-yard line. Although you got it, you do have to question if you're a New Mexico State fan. Uh, Josh Atkins has had a pretty good game. At least he did until he threw that interception to Kendall Vildor. When he does feel the pressure on him, as he does running this offense, he's got to spread it around. Like we said, sometimes he is prone to throwing picks. He threw his 13th of the season already today. Yeah, I was about to say, under pressure, Atkins has some trouble. See if he can work past it. Here at the second half starts. There he is under center. Jason Huntley flanking him in the backfield as they send Abraham in motion. And they'll pitch outside to Huntley behind a couple of blockers and gets barely past the line of scrimmage before Reynard Ellis is there for another tackle. All right, so that's the New Mexico State offense. Does the Georgia Southern defense need to do anything differently? I kind of don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. They've done a great job so far. A great job in the first half. Need to keep that same momentum as this game moves on. All right, second and ten, no gain on the play. Can't quite spin away to the outside, and once again, it's Ellis back to back. That one actually will go down as a loss. I mean, such high praise from Raynard Ellis when we talked to Scott Sloan, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Southern. He's able to make some big plays and the blow things up in the backfield. You know what's so funny is when he talked about the captains and the, the guys who make this defense run, a lot of the time you think of Rashad Bird, but these last couple games, Raynard Ellis, I would say, has actually been the best defensive player. I mean, everyone stepped up in different situations for this defense. Look at Vleem almost getting the sack there. Atkins rolls, stays on his feet, looks downfield into coverage. He's got a man, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Robert Downs. That was his third target of the day, and that'll bring up fourth down and long. And Donald Rutledge running in to to put pressure on Atkins there at the very end. I mean, you look at each level on this defense, everyone can step up. On the defensive line is Raymond Johnson. And for the linebackers, it's Reynard Ellis, Rashad Bird, Jay Baldry. And then when you look at the corners in the secondary, it's Monquavian Brinson and Kendall Vildor really get the job done. And the only reason that, speaking of the defensive guys, the only reason the secondary doesn't have more interceptions this year is because teams have really been afraid to throw at Monquavian and Kendall, frankly. And also, this is the second team the Eagles have faced this season that really is a pass-first offense. The first one was LSU in the, home, in the season opener. Here's Kennedy to the 50. He's pointing out his blockers where he wants them. Kennedy inside the 20, and he will go. It's his third touchdown of the game. Wesley Kennedy, welcome back, and what a star you've been. Just what a run. I mean, he knew exactly what he wanted as soon as he got it. And he was pointing his blockers exactly where to go. When we take a look at this replay, I want you to pay attention to how he is quarterbacking his blockers as he makes his way downfield. That was a thing of beauty. This from Bass would make it 35 and five unanswered touchdowns. Well, that was a blown up play from the very beginning. Yeah, I don't think Bass got a chance to kick it. I just think it got blown up in the back and Anthony Beck just had to, had to keep it. Didn't look like a good snapper or a bad holder. Something with the rain is, is just what I would guess, but okay, uh, they're off to the races here. Yeah, just a big time way for Georgia Southern to start the second half. 67-yard punt return for Wesley Kennedy. He is a big-time playmaker for Georgia Southern. Two rushing touchdowns, punt return touchdown. Game winner last week against Coastal Carolina. End of regulation touchdown the game before that against South Alabama to send him into overtime and give him a chance to win 
He has unquestionably been the X Factor. So electric. And let's take a look at the replay. I want you to take a look here. Oh, well, this is the. See how bad snap. Bad, that was bad hold. snap. Like a, like a bad hold by Beck. Here's Bass. Not even giving Huntley the chance, which I'm a little surprised about considering that they almost got busted for a safety in the first half because of this weather. Yeah, Huntley wasn't going to go for that one. And it'll be interesting to see what Huntley does here as New Mexico State makes their way back on the field. And there might not be many fans here because of the weather, but... The ones that are here are allowed. I'll tell you what, man. The, the Georgia Southern fans that are here today in Paulson and more than likely are the same fans that showed up last Saturday against Coastal Carolina. I mean, kudos to them. Love it. New first down and 10. This is Gibson up to about the 30-yard line and a gain of five. And I'll tell you, as good as Huntley has been on the ground, I've actually been more impressed today by Gibson. Yeah, Gibson's got a majority of the carries. This is a 12 carry over 65 yards rushing so far in this game. I mean, he's been able to make get some solid yardage for the Aggies. Yeah, he's been really great. Second down and six. Back to Huntley to go as he spins to the outside, and he's taken down by Kendrick Duncan. That was a great read by Duncan. Saw where the running back was, was going towards. Met him in the middle. Made a great tackle. Okay, so if you're a Georgia Southern fan, and you see this defense performing so well, this must encourage you thinking about the next couple games they have coming up. Third down and four. Atkins to keep. And he's not going to get there. Only got to the 32-yard line, bringing up fourth down. And what I mean by that is Georgia Southern, this game, they expected to win this game. They were 14-point favorites in Vegas. But starting next week, they have a really tough stretch with three really tough road games in the next four weeks. Yeah, I mean, you have a short week to prepare for Appalachian State, who was rolling here in more than likely the conference favorites, a 30-3 win over South Alabama. Then you have Troy, another top team in the East Division, before you return home to take on Louisiana Monroe. Really tough stretch coming up for Southern. We'll talk about that a little later in the game, too. Well, Kennedy's waiting there back at the 29-yard line. He just ran a punt back for a touchdown. And this will take a good Aggie bounce and roll it down around the 15-yard line, which is where Southern will take over, call it the 12 or the 13. We'll take a quick break here on ESPN3. Eagles still leading. Well, this night might not be the best game of the year for Shy Wurtz for Georgia Southern, but it kind of doesn't necessarily need to be, Danny, because the rest of the team's been phenomenal. I mean, he's had some solid rushes. Six carries for 53 yards, had that big 46-yard run in the first half. We just really haven't seen him, haven't seen him really get going as much. Nice run by him there as he scampers up to around the 20-yard line and gets a gain of seven or eight. At the same time, you don't really have to when you have Wesley Kennedy and J.D. King getting the job done for you on offense. And I'll tell you, it would really take something special after this performance for Wes Kennedy to not be the Sunbelt Conference Player of the Week. Oh, I think he's got a lockdown. I mean, already three touchdowns today, and there's no telling how many more he can go for here as this game rolls on. And I'll be shocked if we look at Reynard Ellis' stat line at the end of this game and don't consider him for defensive purposes as well. Second down and four. Back to the ground they go. It's King. He's got a first down as he spins forward to the 25-yard line and gets a couple more up toward the 30. All right, J.D. King, do your thing. That's the power of King right there that you're seeing. Able to bring the fenders along with him to get a couple of extra yards and got the first down. They'll get off the field, and then they'll send back on Matt LaRoche. I'm a little surprised that Matt LaRoche has not gotten that many carries, also considering they've given Green a couple. Yeah, you would think that LaRoche would get more carries than Green. Well I, I, well, I think right now, with the lead that the Eagles have, you should see LaRoche and Green get some more carries here in the second half. I would imagine we would as we get to the fourth quarter, probably. And that's exactly why they call him Speedy. Man, he got through that hole fast and turned it into a gain of eight or nine. 
I mean, that hole closed fast, too. Right. I mean, LaRoche, 5'9", 180, redshirt sophomore from Venice, Florida. Part of a talented sophomore group of running backs for Georgia Southern, although Logan Wright is out for another man probably five or six weeks. He was their number one guy before he went down. Although based on the performances that Wes Kennedy's had the last couple of weeks, even when Logan Wright comes back, I'd be shocked if they don't start making Kennedy the focal point of their offense outside of Shy Wirtz. Here's King behind a couple of great blocks into New Mexico State territory. You want to know something really interesting about J.D. King? I, mean, I do. Due, due to his class schedule, and you can't really help it being a student athlete, but due to his class schedule, he's not able to practice with the team on Wednesdays. So every week he's missing Wednesday practice. He comes in and practices on Tuesdays and has to miss Wednesday and then Thursday. So you wonder what that does to an athlete be, having to miss practice like that. You would never know based on this game. Absolutely. And I would say last game Close too. to 100 yards rushing already here in this game. All right, Eagles from the 46. New first down. King with some space past the linebackers up to the 39 and bringing up second down and short. And I'll tell you, it's been a nice balancing act using King up the middle and Kennedy up along the outsides. And actually, that kind of balance, but knowing that you need to be able to get yards on dive plays, if we're being honest, that's what Southern's offense really was missing for the first couple of games was knowing you could go up the middle for five yards. Yeah, and J.D. King provides that. and it's, He's done a great job so far, averaging over seven and a half yards per carry in this one. Second down and three, that diamond backfield. It's LaRoche. Shakes a couple of defenders down to the 30 for a nice first down and a gain of almost 10. And now you're seeing LaRoche getting more carries in the second half as we talked about. That one a great gain. Got the first down as well. Rain has certainly calmed down here at Southern. I wouldn't say it stopped, but it's pretty much gone down to a drizzle. Mark Mashad split to the top of your screen. No deep safeties back near him. On a new first down. It's King. Tries to get to the outside. He's already got two touchdowns. Can he go for three? No, down to the 10. And that was close. He had great blockers. Yeah, Mark Mashad out there with the block and then trying to push Jake Edwards where he needed to go. It was really close to being another touchdown for the King. From Fitzgerald, Georgia. Really great high school football program down there the last decade or so as well. Was recruited heavily coming out of high school, chose Oklahoma State, but when it was time to transfer, said he remembered how at home he originally felt at Southern and how much the coaches wanted him. LaRoche down to the six. I mean, I'm just excited to see what this Eagles team is going to do in the second part of the season because it is the midway point beginning the second half the Eagles are three and three entering this game had some rough patches earlier in the first couple of games of the season and now this is a, the first game for Georgia Southern this year where they've had such an outright lead that's definitely going to build their confidence up moving forward especially when you have App Appalachian State on Thursday it's definitely giving you reason for optimism for Southern Here's Gerald Green taken down behind the line. Really good tackle along the outside by Javon Ferguson. And that's the first time we've really seen Ferguson make a play or have a good tackle in the backfield. You know, Ferguson came into this day one of the top tacklers in the nation. He really did. And didn't have the start that he wanted in the first half, but a good tackle there. All right, Eagles two for three in the red zone today. Entering this game on the season, they'd only scored nine touchdowns and 20 trips. No reason not to pad some stats, and they come out of the bobsled until they modify the formation. It's King stumbling down toward the three-yard line. That will bring up first down. I think he was a yard or two short. So it might be Tyler Bass time, or they might just go to pad the stats. We'll see. Looks like Chad's going to keep him on the field. 
Why not? One more time. This is Georgia Southern's first fourth down attempt today. Three for four on the season, though, so they don't go for it a ton, but they've been pretty good at it. And they went for it a good bit against Coastal Carolina last weekend. Call it fourth down and three. That's King and LaRoche in the backfield. J.D. King powering forward down to the one. Not a touchdown, but it looks like he got the first down as he fell forward toward the goal line. Yeah, I was about to say, I think he was close enough for the first. Let's see what the officials say. It looks pretty cut and dry from up here. Unless his knee went down early. We'll see. That looks pretty cut and dry from up here. So watch his knee. Well, I guess his knee was down near the two. And it looks like they're going to give him the first down, but we're going to take it to a quick break here on ESPN3. Eagles trying to extend this already pretty big lead midway through the third quarter. All right, we are back. They waved that off, actually. The near side referee had signaled for a first down, but it was actually called back by one of the other judges. So as we return to you, New Mexico State actually takes over inside their own five-yard line. There was a little confusion there with the referees and then with uh, the, the possession as well. Well, like you said, Greg, it looked like J.D. King's knee went down at around the two-yard line. So Georgia Left Southern knee. not getting the first down there. Oh, wow. It's intercepted. It's Rashad Bird around the 15. Touchdown, Southern. All right, get it done, the defensive captain. And that's the 14th interception of the year for Josh Atkins, his second today. And that's the second touchdown on the season for Rashad Bird. Had the... Fumble recovery scoop and score against Minnesota earlier in the season. And then got the interception there and then able to score. This is a great day for Georgia Southern. And here, here's Bass for 41. That is a close one, but he gets it through. Now we go to a break on ESPN3. All right, so Doug Martin in New Mexico State coming off and off, uh, coming off a bye week, headed into a bye week. I would say it looks like they could use a bye week, Danny. Yeah, this is not the the start that New Mexico State wanted, and unfortunately, throughout the season. Dave given up a ton of points. Opponents average over 42 points per contest, and Georgia Southern already with 41 here. Would have been 42 if the extra point didn't have a misstep. Yeah, by the way, Georgia Southern came into this game averaging between 20 and 25 points a game. This is looking like it's going to certainly be the highlight of the year offensively so far. That went out of the end zone, and we will do it again. So New Mexico State, at this point, you can pretty much say this thing looks like it's not going to happen for them. So really at this point, you're talking about breaking out new formations, trying new things, trying to find a groove. What's been the most consistent part of their offense today? I would say Christian Gibson there on the right side yeah, of the Yeah, I was about to say Gibson and then also Jason Huntley. I mean, he had the touchdown in the first quarter. I think those two running backs have been the most consistent thing for the Aggies so far, especially in a game where passing has been very limited. Eagles only bring four. Atkins drops back, goes out of the backfield to Huntley. Falls forward for a first down. Great balance. I think we'll see more production here from the, from the Aggies in the, in the second half. I mean, you had the possession inside the five. Just not, not bad, not a good field positioning for New Mexico State there. And there's a chance by the time we get to the fourth quarter that Chad Lunsford may call off the dogs. We'll see. Outside to Huntley. Great balance once again, getting up toward the chains and a big hit delivered on the back end there by Singletary. And Javon Singletary definitely stepped up recently for Georgia Southern. When Kendrick Duncan got ejected 
against Coastal Carolina. He had to step in a true freshman for Bonaire, Georgia. Played a majority of, of the of the game against Coastal. Has definitely earned playing time here today. This is his fourth game, however, and you know the new rules in the NCAA. You can choose the red shirt if you're a freshman after the first four games that you play in the season. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see what Singletary does following this game. A couple of those players for Georgia Southern you have to worry about. Well, not worry about. You have to wonder whether they're, they're going to take a red shirt or not because there have been a couple of true freshmen who have actually been pretty solid impact players. Yeah, I mean, you look at Caleb Hood in the first couple of games for the Eagles. We're now starting to see Gerald Green. And I like the new rule, having freshmen be, being able to choose whether to red shirt or not because you – get a chance to see where they're at. You get to grade their athleticism and their play style without having to, to risk a full season. And you can choose, you know, if you need more work, take a red shirt. you got to see some action. First down catch there by Jared White. And really, that was the first time today that we've seen Josh Atkins' arm look really live. Well, I think one thing Atkins is really just starting to get in rhythm. That's one thing we haven't seen. I mean, Short, shorthand passing game. He's overthrowing his targets, not able to find anyone to deep ball. Now he's just starting to get in rhythm and move down the field. This is a solid drive from the Aggies here. This has to be their best since early in the game. Since the first quarter when they scored a touchdown. And that was based off a good field position after the fumble. Field. That's exactly right. Great throw over the middle that time. And that one is... Hauled in by Caleb Mills, yet another receiver who only has one catch on the day. Once again, Gibson's got two. Huntley has three, who's a running back. Everyone else just has one. Well, I don't think the Speaking Atkins, of Huntley, there he goes, yeah, close to the first down. I don't think that Atkins has a designated target or a go-to guy as of right now. I think he's just trying to find the open man and he's trying to make plays downfield. That's all you can really ask for at this point. Fourth down and call it a long one. And Aggies are going to keep him out there. One for three today on fourth down. Atkins with some time. Out of the backfield to Huntley. Turns up field to the 32, and I don't think he got it. Eagles are signaling, and so do the refs. It's a turnover on downs. Kendall Vildor the tackle. Just like that, the good possession for the Aggies have been halted. Vildor making a great play. So Georgia Southern not letting up yet here in Paulson Stadium. We're going to take a quick break here on ESPN 3. 1.55 to go in the third, and the party is on in Paulson in just a minute. All right, getting ready to end things here in the third quarter on ESPN3. Eagles up 41-7 to and taken back over on offense after stopping at a big Aggie fourth down. Yeah, great job there by the Georgia Southern defense. New Mexico State had something going at first, but unable to keep it moving. On the ground, J.D. King gets a good push, and let's go down to the sidelines to Amy Zimmer. What do you have, Amy? Greg, coming into this week, Georgia Southern said ideally they want to be able to prove that they can get things done in in regulation. So these past two games, they got it done in overtime, so they wanted to use this game against New Mexico State to prove themselves, and they're doing exactly that in this game. Shy Word said that they are built for this, and the team is starting to see them go from good to great. Greg? All right, thank you so much, Amy. It'll be second down and six here for Southern and you know, Danny, that's exactly right, because not only did the Eagles want to prove to themselves that they can handle a game that should be handleable on their part, but again, you need to know that headed into the hardest stretch of your season, because if you thought these first six games were tough, you kind of ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, and Bob the Best we've talked to before, and he talked about the storm before the calm, and there were still some moments where he didn't feel like this team was where it was at from last year with the 10-win season, and now you're starting to see that. You saw shades of it in the win against South Alabama. You start to see more of it against Coastal Carolina, and now you're outright seeing it here against the Aggies, and that's great confidence and great momentum moving, moving forward. Third down and two. LaRoche and King in the backfield. They'll feed J.D. What a great game he's had. He's to midfield for a first down. 
and a gain of seven. I mean, how about that? Both Wesley Kennedy and J.D. King over 140 yards on the ground. Overall, Kennedy with over 200 all-purpose yards when you include that punt return for a touchdown. Yeah, I'd be shocked if he's not the Sun Belt player of the week by the he, time he this is all this said point. and done. He has to be at this well, point. I mean, there are other games going on today, although no gigantic games in the conference yet. All right, end of the third quarter. It's Mo Bamba time. Hopefully no penalties this week. We'll show you what it looks like after the break. All right, well, it was just Mo Bamba time. Now it's time for some Mo Amy Zimmer. Amy. Last week against Coastal Carolina, we saw Georgia Southern go crazy going into the fourth quarter, dancing to Mo Bamba. We saw that again, but this time it was a little more tame. Last week, Georgia Southern and Coastal Carolina were flagged. So head coach Chad Lunsford said coming into this game that they're going to do a better job of staying on the sideline. However, they work way too hard to not have fun and that they still this week are going to get lit. His exact words, he said, get lit. Greg, back to you. Well, we know that nobody has swag like Chad, and uh, apparently that is picking up on his vocabulary as well. They did get lit. We saw them dance to Mo Bamba around the 50-yard line. Pretty much reined in by the assistant coaches, though. They said, nobody yeah. get out there on the field. We can't have a replay. <laughs> they reined them in. One thing I do do like, I love the support from everyone who saw what transpired in Mo that Coastal Carolina game. Okay, so not only multiple million views on ESPN's social media platforms. I saw it was picked up by Yahoo, by Barstool. I mean, you and I were texting the next day. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. It made Sports Center that Sunday morning. Made Monday night countdown that Monday night. And like you said, Greg, a little Mo Bamba never hurt anyone. Put it on my gravestone, baby. A little Mo Bamba never hurt anyone. And there's a look at that just a few minutes ago. Look it was all. Obama time. Look, they're surrounded by look the coaches. All the coaches just surrounded by the coaches. Just Nobody get on the sure, field. <laughs> making sure they weren't going to have any penalties this time around. That is the responsible way to Mo Bamba, if I may say so. May the, I say so? The conservative way to turn up. That too. First down and 10 for Southern here as we get ready to get into the meat of the fourth quarter. Up 41-7 to seven on the Aggies. Here's Speedy LaRoche driven down in the backfield. And who else? What a game for Rashi Hodge. Haven't seen Hodge much lately since the first quarter. It's a big-time tackle. He's definitely been the leader for this defense this afternoon for the Aggies. Yeah, no kidding. He's been absolutely everywhere. And call that a loss of one yard on the play on forward progress. Shy Wirtz hasn't needed to throw very much today. Just one for three for nine yards through the air. But really, he's been able to do today what the offense was able to do a lot of last year, which is he can run when need be, and he can make the offense work as the game manager. But I'll tell you, it's, it's a... a it's a good sign if you're a Southern fan that he doesn't have to go out and win you this game today. Like, sometimes earlier this year, there have been times. Well, I think more than anything, it's just great to see Shy Words back in a form that he was last season. You know, it, it took some time for him to get going. He suffered the injury against LSU when, they, when he came back. Had to get it – had to – it just took some time. It just took him some time. He had to get in, didn't get in rhythm against Louisiana when he first came back. And then the last two games resulting in overtime against South Alabama and Coastal Carolina. It, it, was, it was a work in progress this season. And with him back to form and Wesley Kennedy back, period, these last two games, this is the offense that we feel like we know a little bit more compared to earlier this season. Here's Wurtz on third down. He's got LaRoche, but he threw behind his man, and he's dropped for a loss by his own two feet. So it's going to be fourth down, and the ball will be placed probably about the 41, 42. It'll oh, it's be, punt It'll be interesting. Well, you say that. We could see Tyler Bass come out. Just I think to try? I, maybe. I mean, we, we talked last week how in practice he was – Hitting it from as far as 64 yards. That's true. So, you know, you, it's 
you know, if you do go to Bass, you're not going to lose anything here. Well, for what it's worth, it might not be a bad idea to practice it because Tyler this year is 6 for 10 from outside 40, which is not nearly as efficient as he was last year. Yeah, he's had some trouble, especially in that Coastal Carolina game, had a kick block. It's the punt unit. And they're going to bring out the punt team instead. This is the first time we've seen the punt team from Georgia. We haven't seen it much here in this game. So what other time? First time in the second half. And here's the kick from Beck. Short one to the 20. And that's going to be great for Georgia Southern. Touchdown at the one by Najee Thompson. Anthony Beck has been so impressive since he took over that starting punting job. And we'll take a break here on ESPN3. Eagles still rolling and New Mexico State pinned inside their own five. Well, the Aggies coming off a bye week, headed into a bye week, but on the other end, Danny, no slouch, Ole Miss. Yeah, Ole Miss, then they had two home games, they couldn't word in UTEP, and then they played Liberty for the second time this season. The life of an independent, huh? Well, yeah. They're pinned down here inside their own five-yard line. They'll go to Gibson. He's been their star running back today. He's up to around the 14-yard line for a first. Yeah, big run for Gibson. The last time the Aggies were inside the five, Atkins threw a pick six. Rashad Bird took it yeah. back. I'll tell you, between Rashad Bird and Reynard Ellis, the linebackers have been stars these last couple of weeks, huh? On the ground they go. This is Gibson again. Up toward the 20, goes shoulder first, shy of the first down, but again, those linebackers, stars. Yeah, Ellis and Bird doing a great job in the interior, and then you have Randy Wade Jr. and Jay Baldry on the outside containing. I mean, this 3-4 defense does wonders i got to give a lot of credit to Scott Sloan. No kidding. Second down and short here. Shoulder first and a first down for Gibson. Now, if I didn't know better, I would say he looks darn near 100% even after he's been battling back from that hammy injury. He looks good to go, man. Yeah, I mean, he's been splitting carries with Huntley throughout this game. Close to 100 yards rushing. That's, like we said, that's the one positive outcome for the Aggies here today. Here they go again. New first down. They keep running to this near side as they hand off to Huntley, and he's got a short gain, and that'll bring us to about a 10-minute mark to go here. So New Mexico State no longer in the Sun Belt Conference. They were for quite a while as they interla as they uh, overlapped, I would say, with Georgia Southern versus the old and the new. But it has been pretty interesting that even though they left the conference, they've continued to play each other these last couple of years. Yeah, and I, I think this might be the last time they faced Georgia Southern for a while. Big run here from Huntley. Yeah, he's trying to make an impact before they say goodbye. Huntley chased down around the 15-yard line and taken down. And it was New Mexico State and Idaho, I believe, it was. that left the Sun Belt at the same time, yeah, the resulting Vandals. in the split of the East and West Division now that we see today. Yeah, the Vandals headed up to the league that they always should have been in the last couple of years, which is the Big Sky Conference up in the Northwest with teams like Eastern Washington, Montana, Montana State. After the big 56-yard run from Huntley, they go to Gibson and back to around the line. It's always interesting to see how conferences restructure themselves at different periods of time. I mean, the, the big one before the Sun Belt restructuring was in the SEC when Missouri and Texas A&M joined. There are a lot of questions about that when it first happened, and now it's has made the SEC an even stronger conference. You're seeing a rain can't forget that team, uh, Can't forget the TV money, too. <laughs> Boy, the rain has picked up a lot here. And it's a, that's probably why you're seeing more running plays here from the Aggies. I think because so. when the rain stopped, that's where you saw more consistent passes from Atkins. And now, with the rain continuing to downpour here in Paulson, you're just seeing the, the Aggies play more conservative, giving more carries to both Huntley and Gibson. All right, Atkins probably has to go to the air here today. He's 13 for 21 with two picks and no touchdowns. And they're not even going to risk it. They'll give to Gibson, and he's brought down for a loss on the play. It's Ellis who got there first again. Ellis along with big C.J. Wright, the six foot, 290 pound sophomore from Sylvania making the tackle. Really great high school football program up there as well in Absolutely. Sylvania. And 
you know, we talked about the different running backs for, for Georgia Southern. Last year, C.J. Wright got a couple of carries. He was going to be the, the big secret weapon for a couple, for a couple of uh, situations. Made a couple people's eyes pop at Clemson, that's for sure. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Atkins steps up and down he goes. And it's Dylan Springer. And that's a turnover on the parties on in Pulse on Little Mobamba. Fourth down turnover. And the Eagles are getting ready to put this one in the coffin. And that might be the final nail in the coffin when you think about it. That kind of just sums up the offensive struggles that New Mexico State's had today. Aggies scored a touchdown on the first drive of the game, which, tell me if I'm wrong, I think they probably recovered that fumble around the 25 or the 30, so it was a short field. The and second play yes. on, for Georgia Southern on offense. Since then... 41 unanswered points from Southern and maybe more coming up in the next eight minutes. Well, would you look at this? Shy Wirtz is on the bench. Chad Lunsford is beginning to call off the dogs. Justin Tomlin is in. And this might be the start of the second stringers for Georgia Southern. We have not seen this yet because they have a big lead this year. This is really the first time. Yeah, and it's great to see Tomlin back out there because it did such a great job in the, the first part of the season where he had to come in for Shy Wirtz against LSU, starting against Maine and Minnesota making that game close. Yeah, he was really amazing considering he kept them in that Minnesota game and in the lead until the final 15 seconds. That game was a real heartbreaker as they feed to in a short game there. So I'll be interested to see just how much Chad Lunsford calls off the dogs here. Well, if anything, I can somewhat assume that we won't see Shy Words the rest of this yeah. game. There's no reason to bring him back out there. Have him rest it up. you got a big game against Appalachian State in a short week as well. So we now see Emory McKenzie in there at tight end instead of Cam Brown. We see Green and LaRoche, so we're starting to see some more second stringers. Yeah. Dexter Carter Jr. also in there as well. The redshirt freshman impressed a lot of people. And he's going to guide this ship for the next seven and a half minutes. LaRoche, short gain that'll bring up third down and six or third down and seven after the gain of two. And Justin Tomlin, I would say, based on how he performed those first couple of games, I know Shy still is another year. Shy, of course, just a redshirt junior, but whenever it's Justin Tomlin's time, I think Eagle fans have grown to feel pretty confident in that down the road. And this is great experience for him. I mean, can you imagine as a redshirt freshman, your first taste of college football action is against LSU. At LSU. In Death Valley. Yeah. Almost 100,000 screaming fans. I was there. It was nuts. All right. Third down and six. Caleb Hood goes in motion. We really have not seen him much today. Here goes Gerald Green and taken down from behind. He could have gotten a couple more yards if he hadn't been chased down by Matthew Young. Yeah. Nowhere for Green to run there. Had a defender behind him as well. They kind of sandwiched him. As he went down, so the Eagles are going to bring out the punt team. And this is the third punt, and we really haven't got a chance to see the true leg of Anthony Beck. I mean, he's had some punts this season that's gone 60. Uh, one, one went over 70 yards. He really knocked a couple of people's socks off at LSU, and McGill Bowerly wasn't eligible to play for a little while there. He came out at LSU, and, I mean, he blew me away. I was there in person watching, and I couldn't believe it. Didn't quite get the right side of his foot on that one. That one bounces around the 45. Takes an Aggie bounce to the 46. That'll take us down into a break. Eagles still rolling here with about six minutes to go. I love the fact that back-to-back -back weeks we've had some really pouring down weather, rain, if I can speak English, here in Statesboro. And although the student section is not quite as big this week as it was last week, Danny, I love the kids stayed. That's great. I mean, yeah, it's homecoming weekend. It's a homecoming game for Georgia Southern. A lot of fans coming out to support the Eagles. I mean, they saw, for those who probably weren't there last Saturday's game, they saw uh, the kids say how lit it was in that triple overtime classic. Well, don't forget, it wasn't just the kids that called it lit. Chad Lunsford said it was lit, too. Absolutely. Ain't I nobody mean. got sweated like Chad. <laughs> You're starting to see that swag burst out here in his 41-7 game. Well, I'll tell you, this is a team that looks excited to play a couple of days from now as they go to the Rock up to App State. As 
Huntley takes the carry there, gets near the sticks. Because don't forget, they don't have a full week. They are playing on Thursday night up in Boone, but this team looks fired up. Actually, if you had to ask me, this team to me looks like they were so excited to play against App State that they came out with the same fire that they're planning on playing with a couple days from now today. Well, you have to remember as, as well, Greg, they wanted to come out here and play for their fallen eagle and Jordan Wiggins after what happened. It's been a rough week for this football program. With everything that's taken place, they wanted to come out here and play this game. And they've been very aggressive, explosive out there. It's been a good running game as well. All right, down inside the five-minute mark, the Aggies have not scored a touchdown since the opening drive of the game about four minutes in. Gibson down for a short gain on the play. And then starting next week, we'll talk about it before we say goodbye, but big couple of road games coming up for Georgia Southern, and it's not just the one game at App State. It'd be one thing if it was just that one game. There's a lot more on the back end, so they really know that they need to play with a bunch of energy, and they're going to try to get a win up there in the rivalry game at App here on third down and nine. It's Huntley. He's not going to get it to the 35. Because, you know, again, it's not just that one game. Well, here's the thing. You know Appalachian State definitely has revenge on their mind, especially considering that they're ranked as well. They were ranked for the first time last season, ranked 25th in the nation, and their first game as a ranked team was in Statesboro against Georgia Southern. It was the first time that Georgia Southern ever hosted their ranked opponent in Paulson Stadium, and the Eagles came to play. Got the win in that game, so you know App doesn't want to mishap again, this time in Boone. All right, so we have fourth down here. It looks like we have a timeout on the field. I'm wondering if it's an official timeout because the scoreboard said fourth and 60. And I can assure you, it is not fourth and 60. <laughs> All right, we'll take one more break here on ESPN3. The Trace, Eagles up 41-7. As Georgia Southern heads to the mountains of North Carolina to battle the top 25 Appalachian State Mountaineers, it's Thursday night. It's Sunbelt football on national television. Touchdown, Mountaineers! And down he goes! It is intercepted! Eagles win in triple overtime! Eagles, Mountaineers, don't miss this story rivalry Thursday night on ESPNU. All right, well, we told you a second ago that Georgia Southern is not done with those tough road games once they play App State because they have a couple brutal ones coming up on the back end. Good punt here for New Mexico State. And Eagles will take it about the 10-yard line. So like we said, App State is just the first of a couple brutal road games because it's Troy after that, then home against the Warhawks, and then right back out on the road to Jonesboro. Yeah, this is going to be a tough five games here for Georgia Southern if they want to try and become bowl eligible. They're going to have to, to dig deep down and, and try to pull through this adversity. Now don't forget, Georgia Southern rolled Georgia State in Atlanta last year. Panthers are a much better team in 2019. I'm telling you, Dan Ellington has been explosive for Georgia State as a dual-threat quarterback. So he's going to be a tough guy to stop once you get to that game November 30th. That's going to be a big-time matchup here in Paulson. I think you're exactly right. So the, this is the fourth of six home games this year for Georgia Southern. So ULM and Georgia State, the final two to close it out. That one's off the hands of Tomlin. He falls in and around the seven. And you think about it, three of those final five games are against conference teams in your division. So they mean a whole lot more compared to when you had to face Louisiana earlier. And let's not sugarcoat it for Sunbelt fans watching this game. The toughest of those games is coming up on Thursday. This league this year has kind of looked like App State and everyone else. And it's almost like App State has the potential to, if things go right, maybe get a New Year's Six Bowl. I mean, they could finish the season undefeated. They beat North Carolina. 
Here's Gerald who's, Green. Who's to say they won't beat South Carolina in a couple of weeks? That's very possible as Green gets up to around the 17 or 18. Got close to the first down, not quite there. The good news for App State is that Boise State lost to BYU last weekend, which handed the Broncos their first loss. Yes, yeah, so that puts them in a prime contention to, to get the New Year's Six Bowl. They're in the driver's seat for that spot right now. So the Mountaineers control their own destiny, and then not to mention they may more than likely have that extra game with the Sun Belt Conference Championship. Very real possibility. If I were a betting man, I would think that's probably against Louisiana. We'll just have to wait and see. All and right. will they remain undefeated? Will this momentum from Georgia Southern carry over to Thursday night? Third and two. Green scampering for the first down around the corner, and he's going to get it. Great job by Green as he continued to bounce on the outside and, and fight for those extra yards that he needed. Yeah, nice play for the true freshman. So, big game. Hope you'll be watching on the ESPN platforms. It'll be on Linear TV on ESPNU Thursday at 8. Supposed to be a blackout in Boone, too. So, you know, that just tells you how they're taking this game. Last time Southern was there, it was cold and dark and rainy. And actually, that's pretty much what it was like last year here in Statesboro, too, for this time of year. Green spins past the 30. That ball is on the ground. And it's recovered by New Mexico State. Jason Simmons got it. A minute 39 left. True freshman of Lancaster, Texas. All right, so Danny, we don't want to spend the rest of the game talking about this, but Georgia Southern App State, the the Mountaineers are going to be favored. The line is not out yet. The spread's not out yet. It's it's going to be App State favored. But this Georgia Southern team is playing so hard and with so much energy. This this would be encouraging to Southern fans after today. And in such rough conditions, too, over the last two weeks, maybe this helps prepare Georgia Southern for what they have to deal with in Boone. Swing out to the far side, and he just undershot his man. Second down. I mean, I don't think we have to tell fans, people that are fans of App State and Georgia Southern, how intense this rivalry is. Yeah. Going back to when they were both in the FCS, both jumping to the FBS at the same time, joining the, con the same conference in the Sun Belt. A big showdown on a Halloween night. The first time App State hosting a Halloween game since facing Troy in 2015. Big weekend for college football around these parts. You have Georgia Southern App State on Thursday, then you have Georgia Florida on Saturday. That's Huntley spinning his way forward for a first down. I believe. Rather, next. sorry, that's November second. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, it is. Jackson, you have like you have two weeks where they're a big rivalry weeks. Of course, you always yeah. have the rivalry week at the very end of the season, final week. But also around this time, you have some big rivalry games as well. I think you probably have your your viewing plans set for this weekend if you're from this part of Georgia. All right, inside a minute to go in this one, though, in Paulson Stadium. Here's Huntley. Southern defense trying to end this thing with just the one touchdown allowed in the opening five minutes of the game. Since then, they have pitched a shutout. And Danny, as good as Wes Kennedy has looked, he will probably end up being at least a major contender, if not winning the Sun Belt Player of the Week. This defense has been mighty impressive. You know, the defense have been, has been great. The offense has been great. I mean... Both Kennedy and J.D. King with big performances, both with 143 rushing yards and both with two touchdowns. That one was intended for Tevis Abraham, the sophomore of Baton Rouge, but it fell incomplete. So another fourth down. Looks like they'll keep the offense on the field to go for it with 12 seconds left. Southern defense trying to keep it at seven out of pride. That's not going to get anywhere near enough yardage. Southern defense comes up big, and that's pretty much going to end this thing here in Statesboro. One more knee is all it's going to take for Georgia Southern. And after starting the year off in a disappointing fashion, one in three, they're about to get to four and three with three consecutive wins, two of which came in overtime 
this is a heck of a bounce back effort this month. For sure. And this is has to be soothing for Georgia Southern to have an outright win like this. Yeah. I mean, the, the previous couple of games, I mean, when you go from back-to-back games where one game's double overtime and then the other game's triple overtime, being able to put it away in regulation like this has to be very relieving. And that's going to do it. Georgia Southern finishes off New Mexico State 41-7, and they are on to the Mountaineers. Danny, that's going to be probably the game of the year for this team. More than likely. So now you got to put this game behind you, a, a big test ahead of you. With Appalachian State on Thursday, everyone's got to lock in and be focused, and they want to try to get the win in Boone. Wes Kennedy for Sunbelt Player of the Week, yes? Yes, absolutely. All Over right, so this was, a, this was a fun one, a rainy one. A windy one, a wet one for the second consecutive week. And both times, Georgia Southern comes out with a win on top of Coastal Carolina. And now 41-7 against New Mexico State. For everybody here on our broadcast crew, including my color commentator, Danny Waugh, Amy Zimmer on the sidelines, I'm Greg Talbot saying so long from Paulson Stadium where it's another big win for the Eagles. All games are live and archived on the ESPN app. And this has been a proud presentation of ESPN. <laughs>